Hey, welcome back to Raw Motivations. Maybe you're a first time viewer or maybe you've been with me for a while. If you aren't, then I just wanna say like who I am. Uh, so my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist. I'm someone who has put a lot of people through a lot of shit. I'm not proud of that and that's not who I want to be. So I've been working for a long period of time to work on healing myself, to work on growing, to work on changing through therapy, through a warrior project, through a lot of different things that I'm working on changing my mind, changing my perspective to be the man that I'm supposed to be. If you're new on here, the goal of this channel, the goal of all of my different channels is to bring about awareness about narcissism and help people out there to find healing, to be able to grow and to find change in their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. I do this through one-on-ones. I do this through my content creation. I do this through my podcast, through the NARC app that's out there. And I do this in all these different ways to try to be able to help people to succeed, to be able to get to the next level of who they were meant to be, of who they are supposed to be, of their vision, their values, the goals that they have down the road that oftentimes they can't see because they've been abused by a narcissist. They've been abused in a toxic relationship. That's why I'm on the app. So if you've watched this far, thanks so much. We're going to jump into today's episode. So what I want to talk to you about today is a lot of people ask, like, what happens when the narcissist gets blocked? Like, what's going through their mind? Are they just going to, like, give up, walk away? Like, do they feel sad? There's all these types of questions about what happens when you block a narcissist. And when that happens, there's a lot of different things that could happen, a lot of different things that do happen, depending on maybe your type of narcissist or how they respond to different events. A lot of times you'll have a person who will block a narcissist who will end up seeing the opposite happen of where they just walk away. They're just like, okay, thanks, I'm done. A lot of times when this happens, it's because they already have worked to create another supply. They've already been grooming another person for a period of time to be able to go off with that person as soon as you pull the plug. As soon as you say, hey, get out. I don't want anything to do with you. They're like, okay, whatever. And they just walk out. They know that they already have a plan. They already have a plan in place of this person that they've already groomed, they've already prepped, they've already gotten ready to say, hey, this is where I'm going if shit hits the fan in this direction. Now, you probably had another aspect of when you block a narcissist and they, you know, all of a sudden are like begging, you know, at the very end of like, you're breaking up with them. They're like, no, like, don't leave. Like, we can work on this. I'll go to therapy. I'll, and all this stuff pops up, this future faking, these gaslighting, and then you block them and then they keep coming back. And a lot of times people get what's called the Hoover effect. And the Hoover is when the narcissist is trying to get back in your life. And they'll do just about anything sometimes. And it could be like a small Hoover, like you know maybe a text, or maybe you bump into them To It could be like an obsession of where you're calling the cops and getting them arrested because of the fact that they won't stop showing up in every aspect of your life and obsessing over you. A lot of people think like, hey, if I block my narcissist, are they actually going to like hate me? Or are they going to realize like everything that they missed, everything that they lost? See, the hard part here is a lot of times people have in their mindset that they've been in a relationship that was a loving relationship or a bad relationship with just someone who was broken and that you know still cared about them and still loved them. When in reality, with a narcissist, you are in a relationship with someone who only cares about themselves. He only cares about their image and their control. So the fact when you go and you block them, they're not sitting on the other side of that block, you know, crying and bawling their eyes out, being like, oh my gosh, I miss this person. I'm so sad that I'm not with this person. They might say that to you as an attempt to play on your empathy and get you back, but they're not doing that. They're not sitting over there like all sad and everything because they don't care. If they did care, they would have shown that in how they acted in the relationship of how they chose to value you, how they chose to respect you, how they chose to show love to you. So when you block a narcissist, you might have the aspect of where they just walk away and they don't seem to care, and they don't. Or you might have the aspect of where they try to hoover and they try to get you back to a point of even obsession. But the thing is when you think about it, the narcissist deep down is concerned about their image. And this makes it confusing for a lot of people because when the narcissist gets blocked, you'll see a lot of different things that'll happen. One of the most popular ones, especially with covert narcissism, is the aspect of playing the victim. Playing the victim after being blocked is the idea where they're communicating to their friends, to their family, to their work, to their church about how they tried in the relationship and how much you hurt them. 
And you might think like, how, how could they even put that together? Well, they want to do that because then they don't have to take accountability for the things they've done in the relationship or for how they've responded in the relationship. And so they want to paint a picture of, hey, this is who I am and this was done to me. Like I was a part of this relationship and she left me. You know, I was a part of, you know, this friendship and he completely gave up on me. Like I was struggling with this and she threw in the towel. And you'll see a lot of narcissists that will try to trick everybody else around them saying, hey, I was committed. Like I tried, but you know, they just weren't interested anymore and they called it off. When you block a narcissist, they're typically going to either go away, they're going to hoover, or they're just not going to care at all and how they respond and how they act. A lot of times people ask, you know, hey, like, are they going to be mad at me? Are they going to finally leave me alone when I block them? A lot of times that transitions into questions asking about when is the last attempt that they're going to contact me? When is the last hoover? When is the last person going to try to knock on my door and, you know, get me back? And the answer I normally have to say and go with is the last time they try to get you back, the last time they try to hoover is the last time that you let them. You see, when you go and you block a narcissist, when you block a toxic person, you have to block them on every single thing imaginable. You have to ghost them so that they don't even realize or see or know that you even exist anymore. Because if they do try to come back, you want to make sure that every venue is blocked. That there's no way for them to get their foot in the door to get a response from you, to get a snide comment through that you end up reading or seeing that produces a reaction out of you that puts you down that spiral of getting back with a narcissist or a toxic person. Oftentimes when you go to the place where you block them and you ghost them, you see aspects that appear like they have empathy that appear that they might have sympathy, that appear that they might be showing emotions of missing you and crying and, and being distraught. But underneath the surface of that, what's really going on is they either miss the image or they miss the control or they miss the control of the image. But the idea with the narcissist is they miss the image of what they had or what they attained to. Now that could be they had maybe status with having a wife or a husband or you know a hot partner or whatever it might be. They had status that they wanted to be able to show the people like, hey, either I'm normal because I'm in a relationship, I'm in a healthy marriage, or maybe I'm I'm normal because I've got this awesome person. You know, I'm the best person because I have this. So they want to construct and fabricate and keep that image. And then there's also the aspect that they really just enjoy the control. So the control over another person, over another human being, another control of where they know, hey, I can say this and I'm going to get this response. I can put out a little bit and I get a giant response. You know, I can put out you know, whatever I want and they're going to still love me. They're still going to come back. They're still going to adore me or tell me how good I am, whatever it might be. And then there's the aspect of the control of the image. And that's the most potent for narcissists because it's not just about the image, but it's about the aspect that they are manipulating that image and they are controlling what other people see. And when they control what other people see, that's like a high for them a lot of times because they're getting away with an image that they fabricated because it's a lot easier to live in that fantasy than it is to live in reality of what they've done, who they are, what they've hurt, how they've hurt other people. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Maybe some of the stuff I've said today might have been triggering in you different responses or different thoughts or different like, oh yeah, like that's happened to me. You know, if that's something that's happened to you, you might need to take a good look at the DSM five. You know, there's, I have a video on that. You might need to take a good look at like what narcissism actually is and see like, hey, maybe I'm dealing with someone who is a toxic person. If you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about that, would love to interact with you. Go to my website, rawmotivations.com, or you can click on the link down below to be able to schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Would love to interact with you and help you, you know, as you progress through a toxic relationship, through the limbo land afterwards of, you know, what did I do? What's wrong? Is it my fault? And then as we get into the part of like where you're going, you know, your vision, your values, your goals that set you apart from that relationship and set you apart to be a better person and a whole person that doesn't have this toxicity built into their lives through that abuse.
If you're interested in being in a group of like-minded people, we have a lot of people that have been downloading and using the NARC app, N-A-R-C, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's a group of people that are either in the relationships or out of the relationships, and they're working on their healing, and they're working on their growth. They're tracking their progress of staying away from their narcissist. They're writing down the truth they experience on a day-to-day basis, and they're trying to see how they can continue to encourage others and grow and change. So download that, check out some of the information there, listen to us on the podcast, so either on Apple Apple Music or Spotify, we'd love to have you interact there and just rate us. We're sort of trying to spread the good news of what's actually going on here. We're trying to spread awareness of narcissism and be able to be a platform to provide healing, growth, and change.